Welcome to the host at Electric Brewery Control how-to video series. I'm Corey with Brewtronics.com. Today I'm going to show you the ins and outs of Strange Brew Elsinore. Strange Brew comes pre-configured and shipped on your hose head electric brewery controller. Basically when you turn it on you're going to come to the desktop and click on Chromium Web Browser. Chromium Web Browser is already pre-configured with Elsinore 2.0 software installed and the address is pre-programmed into Chromium to start that web page. Just to give you a, just a quick rundown of Strange Brew Elsinore, if we click on this Strange Brew Elsinore, it's just going to take us back to our home page. We click check for updates. Uh, if you have a newer controller, it's already updated. It won't do much for you, but it pops up a screen that says checking for updates. Uh, and we have a system configuration, log file, we can show our hidden probes, our temperature data, and so on and so forth. So let's just go through um, our system configuration. General settings, we have Celsius or Fahrenheit. Of course, we're in America, so we're using Fahrenheit. We have a restore state on startup. If that is checked or enabled by clicking on it, basically it's going to restore our entire state of Strange Brew whenever the controller boots up. And we can enable or disable the recorder. Recorder is basically a log of the temperature data in the background. If it's enabled, it'll record that data. If it's disabled, it will not record that data. Uh, we also have a tolerance for our temperature sensors and a time as far as how long it takes be before they update on the software side of it. Um, don't really need to change any of these settings in there. It's already set as default. So we're just going to click save. And if we click on log file, basically it's a log of when Strange Brew started up, if there's any errors or anything in the software. It's uh, running in the background automatically so it basically just shows you what it goes through to start up. And we also have hidden probes. Uh, the only thing that should be in here is the system probe. Basically the system is the CPU core temperature of the Raspberry Pi that you can hide or unhide <coughs> depending on if you want it on the screen. I usually hide it because it just takes up more room and doesn't really do you much good so under that we have temperature data temperature data is a live data versus time graph I had just turned on the temperature data so it's basically just showing since I turned it on till this point in time how much fluctuation I've had in the temperature sensors not much fluctuation at this point Uh, we have recipe details, mash profile, hop additions, fermentation profile, and load beer XML. Now, out of the box, if you click any of these three, it's just going to pop up and say not implemented, sorry. Not implemented, sorry. Not implemented, sorry. And why it does that is because we don't have a profile loaded for a beer XML. Once we load a beer XML file, we can then uh, go in and change these settings. But w if we don't have an XML file loaded, we cannot do anything with this. So we're going to, we can, we'll, we'll go in and load an XML file in just a minute here. We also have the GitHub repository uh, for Doug Eddy for his Strange War, Strange Reels in our server. Basically, it just takes you to the GitHub homepage uh, where his software resides. We have a wiki. And we also have a Reddit forum for Strange Brew that you can click on and go to that. And then we have Shutdown Elsinore and Shutdown System. So Shutdown Elsinore shuts down the server part of the software in the background, but it does not shut down the controller. If we click on that, it'll shut the server part of it off, and we will no longer have any data here. But it will not shut the actual whole controller down. And then if we click shut down system, it shuts down Elsinore, it shuts down the software, it saves the configuration file, and it shuts down the controller.
And on the right, we have our temperature probes. Element one, yellow sensor. Element two, blue sensor. And the black sensor. This is the default shipping configuration for a host head brewery controller. Uh, it's all already configured and showing you all three sensors. If you get an error in here that says no temperature data or zero, you're basically, you don't have your temperature sensors plugged in or it's not recognizing them for some reason. I also have a video on that on how to check out the temperature sensors on diagnose those if you're having any issues with that. So a basic rundown of this is if you want to say set your kettle to a certain point and click on auto change your set point to whatever temperature you want say 155 and if we hit submit give it a second or two then it's going to show 100 percent and it's going to activate your solid state relay inside the controller which is going to send power to your element inside your kettle always make sure your kettle has sufficient water to cover your element and it's on 100 percent once it starts reaching the temperature you want it to and then it'll automatically reduce the settings to get it to the set point you're looking for. If you want to turn it off, you click on off and hit submit. And it turns it back off again. Same with element 2 blue sensor, auto, set point, so on and so forth. We also have a manual control. We can set a duty cycle in time if you'd like. Instead of using the auto mode, Basically this tells it to turn the element on and off at a certain duty cycle and percentage based on whatever settings you put in there. And the fourth final thing on here we have is hysteresis. This is for controlling a refrigerator or fermentation. It basically has nothing to do with actually brewing the software so do not use hysteresis for anything. It's on the screen but you don't need to use it. So. So if you want to change any settings on any of these, basically you just click on the name of the sensor and it'll bring up the settings for that particular element. So in general, we can go in here, we can change the name if you want to change it to mash tun or hot liquor tank or boil kettle or whatever you like, you can change that in there as well. Uh, GPIO 17 is element one. That's hardwired in the controller to GPIO 17 of the Raspberry Pi so changing that will screw it up so leave it on GPIO 17 um, we have a cool GPIO, aux GPIO and calibration if our sensor is off a couple degrees we can change its calibration here to reflect it in here based on whatever temperature we're looking at um, cutoff enabled I don't recommend you use this for anything because it can cause the server part of the software to shut down in the background and then once the server, start, server software shuts down you won't be able to access the screen so I would suggest do not turn on cutoff enabled leave this exactly the way it is don't mess with it if you do decide to change it it'll uh, it could shut down the server software and every time it tries to restart it automatically shuts off if the settings wrong so all in all leave this alone don't mess with it and we have the heat tab. Heat is the cycle time, proportional, integral, and differential. You can change your PID settings to match your kettles and your setup based on whatever configuration you decide is best for your kettle and what works the best. By default, it ships as uh, cycle time 2, proportional 18, 0, 0. Seems to work pretty well for most everybody, but you can go in and refine that as well. You go in here and once you uh, change anything, you click on Save Changes. It says Updated. And that's how you change the settings for Element 1, Element 2, and so on and so forth. Black Sensor does not have any GPIO information. It's just basically a sensor to tell you certain temperatures of whatever you have it used for. 
We also have pump one and pump two. By clicking on them, it turns the pumps on and off. If you double click on them, it'll come up and edit the switch where you can change the name of it and change the GPIO information. The invert tab turns uh, the GPIO from positive to negative and causes it to not work. So leave the invert off. You want it just exactly the way it is. We can also delete it if we'd like. Clicking them again will turn them back off. Takes a second or so before they turn back to white. We also have a timer section where we can create timers and analog inputs we don't use for anything else. That's the basic rundown on Strange Brew Elsinore and hopes it gets you up and running quicker. I'm Corey again from Brewtronics.com and if you have any questions shoot me an email. Definitely get reach back out to you as soon as we can. Thanks and have a great day.